If you've had surgery and you've been sent home with one of these, don't worry. I'm gonna tell you all about surgical drain care in this video. Drains are basically put in at the end of surgery to prevent fluid buildup. When your body's had surgery, it's gonna try and heal and it's gonna make fluid. We want that fluid to come out. Otherwise you get a fluid collection inside called a seroma. All drains are very similar. They basically have an inner tubing and an outer tubing that you have to manage. And we're gonna show you that a bit later. And a little part, this is a bulb or also called a hand grenade, but basically it collects the fluid. The important thing about drains that I think patients need to know is that you can get an infection from your drain. How? because there's an inside part and there's an outside part. And if you're not meticulous with cleaning your hands, you know, taking care of it, the bacteria can go from the outside part and climb inside and get your wound infected. And that's a big deal. Now this is called a blake drain or a channel drain because it has little channels in it. There's another common drain that I've used before many times called a JP drain or Jackson Pratt drain. I tend not to use those as much because the band is a little bit wider and it can clog. Um, and the other thing is it's a bit harder to take out um, when the time comes, making it uncomfortable for patients. The other thing um, is the bulb itself. There's a cap that you're gonna manage and there's an area that connects to the tube. So you have to undo this. I'm just gonna put a little um, clip on this to simulate a closed situation. Um, which you're not going to do, obviously. This is not blood, by the way. It's just some liquid with some food dye in it. So you undo the cap, you empty the drain, and we'll show you a bit later. And then when you compress the drain, that's how you recharge it. And then you put the cap back on. Like this is a compressed drain or a charged drain. And only in this manner is it giving what we call negative pressure and drawing the fluid out. When it's kind of... Um, as it you know, fills up, it kind of becomes like that or poofed up like this. If you see it like this, it's no longer holding suction. And it's really important that you empty it and you compress it again. So the other thing is I've seen patients be told to push, to, to charge the drain by pushing it in like this. This is not very effective, so don't do this, okay? So in the next clip, I'm gonna to talk to you about how I do dressings to prevent drain pain. Drain pain is basically responsible for a lot of misery from many of my patients, and I hope you're not up right now with pain. If so, you're gonna watch the next part of my video which shows you the dressing that I use that can help offset some of that pain. So these are things that we need. We need scissors, we need gauze, and we need tape. So then I'm just going to take off the old dressing. I'm just going to clean this a little bit. Take this off. The important thing is that this is resting. So it's like offering the tube support where it comes out of the patient's skin. And then I'm just going to put tape so this is paper tape, we call it micropore. It's not as strong as some other tapes. It's also a bit more gentle on the skin, especially if you have a drain for a long time, it can end up, you know, kind of irritating the skin. But the point is to, to try and offset the tension on where the drain exits the skin. Now, one of the common questions I get is, I have two drains going to the right side, one of them barely works and the other one's working overtime. In that situation, don't be scared. Let your team know that there's this big difference. And often it's not a big deal because they typically go to the same site. Unless there's one on the right breast or one on the left breast or one on the abdomen, then you need to find out why one of them's not particularly working. And that could be because it needs to be stripped. And in the next video, we're gonna go through that in detail. So for today, we are going to show you how to manage your drain and we're gonna take the dressings off first. When you're doing this at home, you're gonna wash your hands with soap and water. I already did that, but I'm also wearing gloves because we're in a clinic setting. But like at home, you do not need to wear gloves. Just make sure your hands are clean. The easiest thing to do to milk the drain tube is to use an alcohol swab. You do wanna make sure you have one hand to anchor the part of the tube that's closer to the person. So this should never move because you do not wanna pull on the stitch. 
that will be painful. You're going to wrap the alcohol swab around the drain tube and you're gonna slide down in sections. And your anchor hand should also move down along with the other hand as you move down. And then once you've stripped the tube, you can see the drain tube is clear. You're going to take it off section so that you can empty it into a measuring cup. And at the same time, you can also go ahead and compress the drain bulb and you can measure the output. So all about what comes out of the drain, what we call the drain output. Well, you're going to find that at the beginning, the drain output may be on the redder side or bloodier side. We call this sanguineous drainage. That's kind of normal at the beginning when you've just had the surgery. And that should get better as the day progress. So basically, this is kind of more like what we call serosanguineous, which is like a pinky fluid. Um, sometimes I tell my patients it's a bit like rosé wine. So... If, however, you notice a change, meaning it went bloody, it went pale, and it went back to bloody, you should contact your medical team just to let them know. Because what we don't want is that you've started bleeding a little bit from the inside. Bonus tip. I once had a patient who came with a rampant infection of her breast implant, and she did confess to having had her dog lick the drain. So do not let your animals lick your drain. Okay, the day has arrived the drain is ready to come out. So don't be scared. It's actually pretty straightforward, as you're gonna see in this video. I have patients that are so worried, so apprehensive. I've even had patients come in and they're, they're passing out basically because they know the drain's about to come out. It is a relief, celebrate it. You're gonna have your drain out, big deal. So it's really important to familiarize yourself. The one thing I will say is whoever's taking out your drain, make sure they have experience and it's not their first train, okay? You don't wanna be having them learn on you because that's when it can be a little bit uncomfortable. So make sure that they've had some experience, they're comfortable doing it. Okay, so right now we're gonna demonstrate a removal of a surgical drain. So you can see the dressing has been removed. We need to take the bulb off suction before we take the tube out because you do wanna release the pressure and you should have your gauze and tape dressing ready. There is a stitch that's holding the suture to the skin and we're going to cut that. You're gonna feel a little pinch as the suture comes out of the skin. So on the count of three, you're gonna take a deep breath in and blow it out. One, two, three, blow it out. Perfect. So that drain has been removed. This drain site will close on its own within the next few days. The drain track will close over the next 24 hours. Cover with some antibiotic ointment after showering daily. We're gonna put a dry dressing on there. And that's it. Now that you've learned all about surgical drain care, there's one more video that you should watch. It really tells you about the different garments that you can use to protect your drain. Remember, if you pull out your drain prematurely, that can be a big deal. It might mean a trip to the radiology department to have the drain put back in, or in some cases, you might have to go back to surgery because putting on the drain not only affects you know, the area of the skin, but it can actually start bleeding on the inside in a rare circumstance.